Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Masochist's Marathon, a new series on the channel, a new series of 0.15. A little bit late uh, to the party, but better late than never, as they always say. Never, never. Better late than never, as they always say. Um, so I'm going to keep this short and sweet, because I rant enough as it is in the post-commentary, but I feel it's very important to go through these things at the start. I am playing with a few mods, just some quality of life stuff. Uh, nothing that changes any recipes or adds anything non-vanilla. Just things to help me along like picker, uh, upgrade planner, tree collision squeak through, fall because of the type of game we're going for. I just want it. I'm not going to do it without. Uh, crafting speed research. So we still have to research it. Uh, long reach as well, but again, research so we don't just get it straight away. And auto fill because uh, we're going for a death world and I just need it. I can't play without a death world and I need to play with auto fill with a death world. So anyway, enough about that. On with the settings so we're going for marathon definitely which is included in death world but we're going for some kind of custom stuff so i want the frequencies to be very low uh, rail world style so everything is spread out nicely apart from biters of course uh, we also want very big biter bases yeah let's go very big because i've got auto filled so it's only fair i want a big starting area now we want all the patches to be big da -da 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 -da. Uh, because they're going to be running out very quickly because we're going for poor on everything apart from uranium we're leaving a regular crude oil we're going to put on good and I don't know what richness does anymore because I used to think it was for the candy floss but now I have no idea because there is no candy floss but obviously we'll go into some of the changes of 0.15 while we're playing but of course by now you're going to have known what they all are um, so on to a bit more masochism we want the uh Diffusion and dissipation rate to be upped quite a bit. Uh, and we also want the trees dropping. We want to practically be in the middle of a desert. Um, we want it lower than default. Now, the only other thing I'm going to touch with the bite is I tried turning up evolution for time. I thought that was a bit crazy. So we're going to put that just above the default. I believe the default is 400. We've got that five Let's get it on 600. It's pretty sensitive. Uh, we want the destroy factor up, but the pollution factor up even more because there's got to be some masochism in there somewhere. Um, recipes, very expensive. Well, I wish there was a very expensive. Uh, I'm not going to touch the technology price on this one. Four is high enough for me with the resource settings that we're going with. We're going to be having to create outposts very regularly, uh, hence file. Enemy expansion, I was going to switch it off for the railwell style, but I think that's too easy. We can't have that. But I am going to leave these settings on uh, default. And the last thing I want to do before uh, future me takes over, because it's going to be about an hour before I see you again, but you're going to see me in a few seconds, is generate the map. And I'm an avid believer in going with the map you're given no matter what. And there's plenty of stone, very little iron, and it's very spaced out. But like I said, I'm going to stick with what I'm given. At least we've got some clear space to probably start the factory so i'll see you in about an hour so on from past me to present me i guess and we start the new factorio game off like you do with any factorio game by placing a burner miner and a uh, stone furnace to get that going because we're going to need a huge amount of iron with this increased recipe expense so i've played with these settings for about two hours in a test and yeah it's absurdly expensive and that was literally just before, uh, just after 0 0.15 came out. And that is literally all I've had to do with it. So this is my first um, experience of it. This is my vanilla play of vanilla, I guess, if that makes any sense at all. But anyway, so we start off by collecting uh, 40 stone so we can get a number of burners, uh, burner miners and uh, stone furnaces set up so we can get a bit more iron coming through. Um, but yeah, the start of this episode is literally just us getting going uh the episode is at three times speed or is it 3.5 i think i might have set it to 3.5 just with that extra bit at the start because there is an hour's worth of playthrough and yeah it's not too detailed so hopefully it's not too fast but yeah most of the episodes are going to be at three times speed so the starting area i've made my point at the start that i don't like hitting restart until i have a nice fancy area it's all part of the masochism i guess um, but yeah, we go with what we are given and there is an alarmingly small amount of iron in my uh, test playthrough I had too much and I had exactly the same settings 
I started with quite a big iron patch and then just north of me was another big one. So that is a worrying thing, especially considering the fact this is a death world. I'm going to have a lot of clearing to do. Um, so first off, I thought I was going to have the power um, and everything run off this little coal patch down here. But I kind of changed my mind. I was going to mine a load of stone there. Get the stone mine there and, and start aiming mean, to get the power set up down there. But yeah, I changed my mind a few times in the episode. But we will uh, just have to go with it because past me has already played. Yeah, I played for an hour. And now I've come and immediately doing the post commentary straight afterwards. So I got my first burner miner set up on the stone, which might you might think is a little bit weird. But we need quite a lot of stone. I think you need two stone furnaces for a burner miner. And then, of course, yet another one for the smelting. And we are going to be using a few of them. And I don't want to be stood there uh, mining stone for ages. So I use one there. We get two on the coal. Uh, and then another on the copper. Just so we've got everything mining relatively automa automatically. I still have to manually feed it with some coal. But while we wait for the copper to start to smelt, start to build up. I decide to go for a little exploration just to see if any particular patches appear and we do find a copper patch which yeah so we've got plenty of copper in the starting area that's not going to be a uh, problem but sadly no iron patches appearing yet but plenty of desert so at least we've got a nice clear area to build our bus and we're essentially playing in a desert anyway because of the tree settings we've set so thank goodness we don't have to clear loads of trees that aren't going to be just uh, soaking up the pollution anyway uh, but we also have a look at some of the new textures uh, just there. We've run over one of the new textures I've not really seen before. Uh, but we come nicely back round to grab some coal and some copper from our area up there. Also, talking about new textures, loving the new ore patches as well. I quite like them. I don't know how uh, you guys feel about it, but it's nice to have a change. They look a lot more realistic. At least a bit easier on the eyes. So I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that came to the live stream on Saturday for the launch of the rocket in Bob's Angels. It was really good. Apologies if it wasn't an ideal time for uh, wherever it is you're from. I am planning on maybe doing some more live streams, uh, maybe come up with some ideas, uh, maybe do a Factorio multiplayer where people are just welcome to come and join and we just live stream it. I don't know. We'll uh, come up with something, but I would like to do it more. I kind of got a live streaming bug from it. I quite enjoyed it. It's just the only problem was I had a really horrible cold and I really wasn't feeling well. I still have that cold. Um, but it's not as bad and I couldn't really put off starting this series anyway. I really wanted to get on with it because I've been very excited to play 0.15 and I've waited even longer than we had to wait for its release. So we get the start of the power laid out. I've got, I don't know why I built two of the new furnaces, but we mark out kind of the layout I'm going for. There'll be two and then a gap of one for the power poles and then another two boilers and four engines. And that's generally the layout I'll go. And I think it's one pump, 20 boilers and 40 engines. I think that's the now ratio. But it kind of leaves it for only one kind of layout, really. Um, there's, I've not seen any major variations, but we'll, we'll see if anyone can come up with anything interesting. But looking at it, there only is really one layout I can, I can see occurring. Um, I ghost out this belt. I'm not really sure why, uh, because I could just wait until I've got enough. But I kind of lay out roughly where I want it. I guess so that when I do have enough belt, I know where it's going to go. Uh, we get some power up to the coal because the very first thing I want to do is automate power. We want power to be able to feed itself. So that's essentially what we're laying out here. Uh, and we get the electric miner done for it. All we need now is enough belts, which is kind of turns out to just be a lot of palava of running up and down, getting iron, getting coal to feed the iron area. And to be honest, in hindsight, I probably could have put a couple more stone furnaces and uh, burner miners but yeah the problem with that is one suddenly you'll have too much iron and not enough of everything else so i guess i was just trying to keep it fairly efficient not using too much iron too quickly uh, but yeah we keep going back up and collecting some coal and then coming down and getting some iron generally just making belts until i think i've got enough to automate power so the aim of this episode once we've automated power is to try and uh, bring that coal down near to the iron get that copper down here as well so we can at least start some sort of rough automation of red science and we can start to get towards maybe laying out where the bus is going to be i am going to start out with your old traditional bus but because i i'm not sure the ratio of how more expensive all the recipes are 
but I'm going to go double on what you'd normally have on a, a general bus layout. It's not going to be the, 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 the final factory, I hope. I'm going to go for some sort of um, centralized production idea with rails and stuff. I don't want to go too traditional bus, but I am going to need to to at least get the products we need to push the biters out to, to create the rail network and to get going with it. But yeah, to begin with, I am going for the kind of traditional bus. Uh, what I was trying to do there was use the upgrade planner to see if it would highlight the ghosted images, but it only highlights images that were already placed just to see if I had enough belt. Uh, but it turned out I actually had enough belt on me already at the time, so I could have just gone and placed it. In fact, I had quite a bit more than we needed. Um, so the next thing we want to do is get power down to the iron uh, so we can start to utilize that to speed up the production of iron plates. So in this series, I'm going to have to be extremely careful with how much iron I use. This patch here is extremely small and currently it's the only one we can see. I'm going to have to get to trains very, very early uh, and make sure I'm always uh, an iron patch ahead than where I need to be. Because the moment that we run out of iron and we have to go and push out to a new patch, uh, we may not have enough resources to uh, to even get to it. And that could be the end of the, the series. It could be the shortest series on the channel. But we're going to see how it goes. I'm going to get to a certain stage with the first few episodes. I don't know how many it's going to take. I haven't got a clue. Because essentially I've, I've tested this for like two episodes worth. And, and yeah, I didn't get very far. So I'm going to have to push out to an iron patch really early and 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 yeah just try and really keep on top of that we've got the full death world settings so i need to be very careful not to kill too many biters hence why i've gone for the time factor on the evolution because i need to be able to to push out i'm only ever going to use turret creeping when i really really have to i really want to do all the biter slaying uh, good old traditional style but i've got auto fill in there because i know at some point i'm just going to have to use it the settings just aren't going to work otherwise same with long reach as well i've always found long reach to be a little bit op hence why the compromise is we've gone for long reach research so there's a little bit of a uh, compromise there i come and put in a second miner on the coal for the power just to make sure we've got enough for that because the power isn't even running near full speed and um, when it is i think it's going to need more than one miner there probably is a set ratio for the number of electronic miners uh, per boiler in vanilla, but I don't know what that is at the moment. I'm sure I'll find it out. Um, but we have now electronic mining of the iron, and we've got that laid out on a belt. Uh, soon we'll get an output laid out, and we can start laying out some sort of level of automation. And speaking of automation, that's the first thing we're going to research to get some assemblers. Um, but as per always, you have to get these produced manually, of course, because we have no assemblers to do it. So the whole chicken and the egg scenario starts with you crafting the eggs in your pocket, I guess. That makes sense. Um, but anyway, yeah, so while that crafting is going on, we're trying to keep busy. Just trying to keep topped up on copper and coal. Those are always the easy words for me to say one after the other. Um, but yeah, loving the uh, the new dragging functions in vanilla. Basically, the, <laughs> this is just going to be me getting really excited about the new features I've not been able to play with in 0.4 so the dragging function is absolutely fantastic. I've got the latest um, copy of Picker as well. So we get all the crazy stuff that keeps getting added to that mod that is slowly absorbing every mod there is. So we leave the factory with those science packs or most of those science packs in a lab. And I go to do a bit of exploring because I was very nervous in this playthrough. I was thinking, uh, is this map a really good idea? Have I gone and jinxed myself saying I have to go with the starting map I go for? And we find a patch pretty much straight away. A not very big patch. That one's 154k there. So we carry on searching. There's a fairly decent coal patch there, roughly in the starting area. But again, that first patch of iron was right next to a load of biters, inevitably surrounded by fields of red. And we find a fairly decent patch. I believe this one's 874k. Our starting area patch is around 220k. So that's a really good find, the, the fact that it's not where the biters are. We've got the expansion switched on for biters so if i leave it too long they're going to push out to that so i think what my plan is going to be is as soon as we've got turrets is to prevent them from pushing out at least to that iron patch stop them from uh, encroaching into the starting area because if i had disabled expansion i would have been able to have just ignored that and not really had to worry about it but that would have been way too easy uh yeah i kind of contemplated 
switching it off quite a bit. And then, you know, when I went to do it to look how the settings looked, I thought, no, that's not really going with the masochists way. So yeah, we've got that switched on. But at least that's that's made me a bit more relaxed. The patch is pretty accessible. I don't need to do any slaying really to achieve it. The only problem is if I go and cover that in miners uh, with the pollution settings we've got, that's just going to cause loads of evolution. So we need to be very tactful about when we start using that patch. I only need to, I only want to do it when I really need to, but as long as I fortify it early enough, we can access it whenever ever we really want to. So we get a electronic miner in on the copper, just so I don't have to keep refueling the burner miner and at least just the stone furnace needs replenishing. Uh, but we are using quite a lot of copper now, probably a bit more than iron. So I need to sort that out. But I look at doing some form of automation with the uh, the iron plates as we've finally finished the tech for it after our little stroll. So we come and get an output put in on some of the iron smelters, not all of them, so that I still have access to my own personal supply. Uh, but the first thing we get automated is belts because I want to get the copper and the coal down here. So next episode we can at least start getting on with some form of uh, proper smelting. But I want to get it all down in a similar area so I'm not running up and down because it was very frustrating with these two areas sort of spaced out. It doesn't seem so bad at three times speed and to be honest they're not really too badly spaced out but some starting areas you can get are absolutely perfect and it just has everything where you want it. So this is a separate install from my 0.14, a uh, completely default setting. So I had a little bit of a problem with the picker mod. It wasn't crafting me stuff that I didn't have. So I had to change it to the Q key, but then it was making the annoying noise it makes when you don't have something. And I kind of messed around with it a bit. And I forgot that the picker function is now in vanilla. So I worked it out straight after the recording. I needed to also take Q off the uh, vanilla setting. So we're just using picker. So that was working and will be for the next episode. Hopefully it doesn't start causing me other problems. And hopefully I've got those settings right. So with the automation of uh, transport belts, we can start looking at getting these resources down near the iron area and we can start working on getting, you know, a really rough area sort of set up. So that's what the iron area is at the moment. It's just a very crude temporary bit just to produce things that I'll need. And that's what the area is going to be in the next couple of episodes, just to get a bit of <clears throat> just a bit of crude research going while we start to lay out the proper bus because I don't have splitters at the moment and I need 80 science packs uh, to research the tech for it. I can't, yeah, I can't split off the coal belt basically. So I have to make a complete separate one from the power. And I also have a bit of a problem with the copper as well. Um, I'm going to have to get that copper under the coal belt somehow. And I don't really want to go all the way around the coal patch because that'll just look absolutely horrible. So we have a feed of coal for our future smelting area. Um, I grabbed some more of the automated transport belt. I also picked up some copper ore earlier, so I quickly put down a stone smelter and just chuck that in there just to get a little bit more copper while we go and look at dealing with this situation where uh, the copper's on one side of the belt and I need it on the other, basically. So we head up back to the copper patch and I decide to take the coal just round a couple of the copper miners because we're not going to really need uh, absolutely tons of copper to get to the point where we get underground belts and splitters it's just again something's just a bit temporary so we just take it round it's uh it's not gonna be too much of a problem and to be honest as soon as I can fix it I will take the corners out because uh, even though it makes no functional difference I don't want these extra corners in the game so we get a second copper electronic miner set up and we start to take the ore down to the area so the reason why I want these resources down here is because the the bus in the last game was uh, westerly facing and I haven't done an eastern facing bus in a long time and I know it doesn't really make a massive difference but it's really satisfying to have uh, you know when you're doing a new bus have it going in a completely different direction from from what you've done before. I don't really like north or south facing buses I find them a little bit weird so it's really ideal that this desert has kind of been spawned to our east it's it's spot on for what I want so I guess that's one nice thing and we don't have to clear loads of trees for this bus to uh, to to grow. So I start laying out some really horrible uh, crude excuse for some automated red science uh, because we're going to need a lot of science packs for logistics. And to be honest, I'm not going to do them all manually and I'm not going to manually feed assemblers either. I guess you kind of have to look at marathon playthrough kind of like a lazy bastard's playthrough 
you pretty much just need to get everything automated just because of the absurd amount of resources everything's going to need. Um, so I do lay it out for the five red sciences, or is that sick? Yeah, past me has clearly got a bit carried away and he's laid it out for six assemblers. Uh, it would normally be five, but again, it doesn't really matter in this area because it's going to be very, very temporary. As soon as i got a bit of smelting set up and some sort of a bus, uh, we're going to be doing the red and very quickly doing green science on there. So yeah, this area is going to be extremely temporary, probably just for logistics. But yeah, I spend the last bit of the episode trying to get this area as set up as I can. Uh, we probably need some more science labs and I don't get all the inserters placed down. But basically, yeah, I start to run out of time trying to get this done. But that's fine. We can get it sorted in next episode. One thing I want to do differently from Bob's Angels is uh, I don't want to do anything in between episodes. Nothing at all. And to be honest, because it's vanilla, that's, that's going to fit in a lot more. There's going to be a lot less tidying I have to do. There's no artifacts for me to clean up um, and a lot less stages of belts to be upgrading to um, and also apologies again for my voice I've still got a terrible cold uh, but hopefully next episode uh, I'll be a lot better and a lot a lot more able to uh, rant along as the episode goes along in front of us so we have a cr very crude layout for automated red science but at least it's not a bad start for the first episode and we just finish off having a quick look at the map there's a nice big red wall to our east uh, but yeah that's going to be all we have time for I do hope you have enjoyed Thank you so much for watching and please do come and join me in the next episode. Bye bye.